In the aftermath of World War I, United States automobile manufacturers quickly switched from supporting the war effort to once again producing cars. Car ownership quadruples from what it was before the war. Households all over the country have cars now. 90% of roads are still just dirt. In 1916, Congress passes the Federal Aid Highway Act, which offers some of the first national funding for roads. But it's not nearly enough for suitable highways. In Iowa, a local highway commissioner, Thomas McDonald, is thinking bigger. Thomas McDonald grew up in Iowa. He witnessed as a boy working in his father's feed and lumber store what farmers were experiencing, their crops rotting before they could get to market. And he saw his road building crusade as the only way to bring a better life to these people. But McDonald doesn't just want better roads. He's obsessed with roads that connect, allowing people and products to move anywhere in the country. And in 1919, McDonald gets the chance to make his pitch when he's appointed chief of the Federal Bureau of Public Roads. This country needs a highway system, but we all know the states can't afford to pay for it. The federal government needs to provide more funding. 50-50. It's an investment in the future growth of the United States of America. Where do we begin? It's now 1938, and President Franklin Delano Roosevelt battles the Great Depression with a series of sweeping governmental reforms to get the economy moving again. FDR, coming into the White House at the darkest days of the Depression, saw the need for employment. And there's no better way to put people to work than building a road. So the road building efforts become this way to prime the pump for FDR. After over a decade of waiting, McDonald sees an opportunity to keep his grand plan alive. Mr. President, I've been developing this for 20 years. Imagine a highway system that goes beyond a couple of transcontinental routes. Imagine a system where every state has their own highway, allowing us to drive anywhere and everywhere in America. Roosevelt approves $25 million for a difficult first project to prove McDonald's ideas can work, building a 160-mile stretch of highway right through the Appalachian Mountains. In Europe, Supreme Commander Dwight D. Eisenhower is also seeing firsthand the value of better roads. The German Autobahn is far and away better than any highway system in the United States. And never is it more on display than after D-Day, during the battle for Europe. Eisenhower took roads and made them one way, two lanes, one direction, towards Germany. They were fighting on the east. Eisenhower was coming in from the west. And he gets across the Rhine, gets onto an Autobahn, and he gets ahead of the retreating Germans on their own road system. By 1945, the war is over. And the US will emerge as a superpower. Dwight D. Eisenhower serves as Army Chief of Staff under Truman, then the first Supreme Commander of NATO. And on November 4th, 1952, he wins the presidential election in a landslide. With President Eisenhower making highways a new priority, Thomas McDonald is primed to finally fulfill his interstate dream. Secretary Weeks. Eisenhower decided that he wanted a different head of the Bureau of Public Roads. Eisenhower's new highway boss, McDonald's old protege, Frank Turner. Hello? 
It's almost like Frank Turner got a, a battlefield promotion. This engineering accomplishment is going to need a brilliant mind, and Frank Turner is that person. Finish this for me. By the late 60s, only 25,000 miles of the proposed 40,000-mile interstate system have been built. And Chief Engineer Frank Turner's highway budget is now almost twice his 1956 estimate. Despite being over budget and behind schedule, some cities are seeing significant growth. Places that were towns like Albuquerque, Dallas, Phoenix, they are now able to become these massive metropolises. Between 1950 and 1970, Denver has doubled its population, Houston has tripled, and Phoenix is 10 times its size. While cities east of the Rockies are enjoying the benefits of the new interstate highways, Frank Turner is on a deadline to connect them to the West Coast. He's made a big bet on a $7 million drill named the Shield to finally get I-70 through the mountains. Only 70 feet in, it gets stuck. It's just incapable of getting through this massive mountain. The weight of the mountain above is too much. If Turner wants his direct route through the Rockies, he's got to find a way to keep it from collapsing. There is no other way. We have to go through the mountain. So now we try the multiple drift technique. So the multiple drift technique is where you have a main tunnel, and around that main tunnel, smaller drift holes are drilled and then filled with concrete to beef up the surrounding rock. So the probability of cave-ins is reduced because these multiple drifts that surround the main tunnel create a protective layer. Using the multiple drift technique, crews successfully tunnel a two-mile highway through the Rockies. Dubbed the Eisenhower Memorial Tunnel, when it opens in 1973, it's the highest tunnel in the world. Now, suddenly, the western side of the United States is open as well, because this path from Denver through the Rocky Mountains opens up all sorts of development. Think of tourism, think of skiing. After this accomplishment, Turner retires, but work on the interstate carries on. Congress continues to spend highway dollars, but the economic boom isn't enjoyed by all communities equally. The story of the highway system is complicated. It was something we needed to do as a country, but also it was done on terms that excluded a lot of people. Much of the interstate infrastructure in the United States where it passes through cities is gonna be built over the heads and through the houses of African-American and other low-income residents. And those Americans ultimately see communities that have been hard won and built out of decades of migration, turmoil, and struggle erased overnight in the name of progress and planning. So we look back now on a mixed legacy, but there is no question that America would not have developed into the world-leading economy we are today if we hadn't made that choice to invest in a highway system. Finally completed in 1995, Almost 30 years late and $100 billion over budget, the interstate highway system gives Americans more choices on where and how to live. It brings together what had been small pathways, trails, smaller roadways into a standardized system of signage and construction from coast to coast. We're talking about 47,000 miles of highway, 55,000 bridges. Someday, thousands of years from now, archeologists are gonna look back on the America of the 20th century, and even though the pavement may be long gone, the interstate highway system, 
It'll be there forever. 